not serious. Fighting a Mike Tyson, yeah, I can understand. It's a lot of money. It's going to attract a lot of eyeballs. It's great. But the only critique I have uh, for Jake Paul is that, you know, if, if you want to take the sport serious, then, then take the route that world champions take, you know, fighting top 20, top 10, top 5. Boxing pros have revealed why Jake Paul is making a big mistake by fighting Mike Tyson, Jeff Fennec. Mike Tyson's XT trainer is confident that Tyson will take down Jake Paul in less than two rounds. Nonetheless, Beck highlights that the forthcoming match holds importance that transcends the mere knockout. He said, I have no doubt if Mike takes it easy and doesn't try to punch at the same time, if he makes Jake Paul miss, Mike will knock him out in a couple of rounds. 100% FCK is certain that Paul will be unable to handle Tyson's Mike. He added, I spoke to Mike and I told him what I felt. Hopefully he'll listen to me. We said the same thing anyway if he does. What he said then I have no doubt he will knock him out he'll have no problem Fennec. Having a deep history with Tyson through their numerous collaborations witnessed the conclusion of Tyson's professional boxing journey including the unexpected defeat by Kevin McBride in 2005. Additionally Fennec took on the role of trainer for Tyson's 2020 exhibition match against Rory Jones Jr. Tyson commands both fear and respect within the boxing community. His formidable presence, relentless fighting style, and explosive knockout power have cemented his status as one of the most intimidating figures ever to step into the ring. In his comments, Anthony Joshua provided an interesting historical background to Tyson's skill and supremacy. Joshua said it's quite interesting because in the era of Ollie's heavyweight reign, the heavyweights were ranked as cruiserweights. So, in the Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes, George Foreman, Lennox, Lewis era, they started getting bigger hints. Why in the amateurs they then created a super heavyweight division. Joshua underscored the importance of establishing the super heavyweight category in amateur boxing division that parallels what is now recognized as the cruiserweight class in professional boxing. He added, so the current heavyweight division in the amateurs is what we class as the cruiserweight division in the pros. So a lie went from lightweight and worked his way up. He wouldn't have been a fully fledged heavyweight. Let's say we bulk boy up and added size and strength to him. I truly believe Mike Tyson would have won. Joshua made an insightful analysis speculating about a potential clash between Ali and Tyson. Joshua said the reason being when you watch the fight between Joe Frazier and Ali, you see a certain Tyson-esque style in Frazier. Tyson used to study Frazier moving, moving hooks, hooks. He managed to put Ali down. It was a very tough fight for him. Joshua's perspective on Tyson. Distinctive style which he terms Tyson-esque. And his conviction that Tyson benefited from superior training and development. Thanks to modern sports science and information advancements, introduces additional depth to the ongoing discussion about Tyson's formidable legacy. He said, I just believe Tyson was better schooled because times have evolved. He was more developed with more science, more information. So Tyson would have won in my humble opinion. Mike Tyson's enduring legacy as a fearsome and powerful figure in the boxing realm is reinforced by the first-hand accounts and perspectives of other boxing icons. Roy Jones Jr., a distinguished fighter in his own right, provided valuable insights and reflections. Based on their memorable encounter in the ring, Jones said he is capable of fighting anybody I survived it. I'm happy to scratch it off the bucket list and move on with my life. Jones Jr. reflected on the grueling experience of going up against Tyson, highlighting the sheer force and ferocity of Tyson's punches. Even though he endured the match, Jones Jr. openly discussed the lingering aches and fatigue he felt, emphasizing that Tyson's hits left him utterly sore and exhausted. It hurt. Everything hurt. His hands hurt. His head hurts, everything hurts when I make contact. So it's like, I'm like, wow. Recognizing the distinct hurdle of stepping back into the ring after a two year absence to confront Tyson, a titan in the annals of boxing, Jones Jr. contemplated his approach for the upcoming bout. Taking cues from Tyson's past encounters with Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield, Jones Jr. honed in on the tactic of engaging in close clinches with Tyson to nullify his formidable uppercuts and potent punches. And, and it makes you so fatigued trying to deal with him, trying to cause on the inside. You got to keep his arms locked. I learned that from watching Lennox Lewis and Holyfield fight. You got to lock his arms up or he'll hit you with them uppercuts. So I was trying to keep his arms locked up. And every time I let him go, what you think I'm going to let him go so he can kill me? Nah, bro. <laughs> it's not going to happen like this. Jones Jenner underscored the significance of honing clinch work and effectively landing punches in close quarters, all while ensuring his guard remained tight to Sty Tyson's formidable power. Despite enduring substantial discomfort from Tyson's blows, which even left his jaw tender from a punishing uppercut, Jones Jr. maintained steadfast resolve, affirming that he never experienced dizziness, nor entertained the notion of succumbing to the canvas. Just, and with the clinches, it made it good, so I was able to land punches on the inside of the clinch and get him back before he could ever throw anything good, so that's what, that's what my strategy was going in, that's what our strategy was going in, was to clinch him on the inside. Box him outside, As Jones Jr. contemplated Tyson's dominating AEU within the boxing arena, 
He remarked on Tyson's sheer physical prowess, observing that despite his official weight of 220 pounds, Tyson seemed to loom even larger and more intimidating up close. Jones Jr. conceded the inherent dangers of stepping into the ring, with Tyson underscoring the reality that a single blow from either combatant could swiftly alter the trajectory of the bout, inflicting considerable harm. Go. He bigger than he weigh, he he weigh 22, but now he more massive than 220. Trust me, Roy Jones Jr.'s personal narrative debt, ailing his showdown with Mike Tyson, offers profound revelations into the indelible mark and formidable aura Tyson holds in the realm of boxing it unveils a deep understanding of the daunting physical and mental obstacles one encounters when stepping into the ring with a titan like Tyson. Let's take a journey back to the golden era of Tyson's dominance a period spanning roughly from 1987 to 1990. He rose as an indomitable force, captivating audiences and opponents alike with his electrifying performances in the boxing arena. Renowned UFC commentator Joe Rogan hailed Tyson's unrivaled prowess at the peak of his career, recognizing his profound influence on the landscape of boxing. Dude, so he bigger than he weigh. He, he weigh two twenty, but now he more massive than two twenty. Trust uh, a fighter's career. <clears throat> Sometimes people forget about the high points. They don't look at the low points. They look at a fighter when they're not as good anymore, when they're not as committed anymore, maybe they have health problems. They don't look at the time when they were at their highest RPMs. That's what you got to look at. In a classic episode of his JRE podcast, the former Fear Factor frontman emphasized the unmatched supremacy and individuality of Tyson's prime. Rogan didn't merely view Tyson as just another fighter. Rather, he portrayed him as an exceptional presence within the ring. Tyson's explosive power and relentless aggression set him apart from every other heavyweight contender that came before him. Rogan depicted Tyson as a natural force, a relentless force that struck fear into the hearts of his opponents. But Mike Tyson in his prime in those years from like, what was it like 86, 87 to 8,990 whatever those years were where he was just storming the gates I, I put that Mike Tyson up against anybody who ever lived Rogan underscored the distinctive attributes that distinguished Tyson from his heavyweight counterparts portraying him as a paradigm-shifting figure in the realm of combat sports. Tyson's unyielding ferocity, masterful finesse, and unparalleled knockout prowess position him as a formidable presence, consistently leaving adversaries vanquished in his wake. Rogan's profound reverence for Tyson's prowess and supremacy shines through as he paints each of Tyson's prime fights as a master stroke of execution. He extolled Tyson's relentless power, annihilative force, and pinpoint precision underscoring the flawlessness with which Tyson executed his strategy and overcame his adversaries. But Mike Tyson, in his prime, in those years from like, what was it like, 86, 87 to 89, 90, whatever those years were, where he was just storming the gates, I, I put that Mike Tyson up against anybody who ever lived. In Joe Rogan's poignant homage to Mike Tyson at the peak of his career, he eloquently highlights the profound imprint Tyson left on the landscape of boxing. With an unparalleled blend of finesse, strength, and ferocity, Tyson reshaped the heavyweight division, etching his name alongside the pantheon of boxing greats. Rogan's depiction of Tyson as a unique force and a dominant presence reiterates Tyson's standing as a true icon of the sport, emphasizing his lasting impact on the realm of combat athletics. That guy was a special fighter. The Mike Tyson that beat Marvis Frazier was a beast. He was a just a juggernaut just you couldn't stop him he was coming at you and he had everything he had knowledge he had this deep library of, of films that he would watch because his his manager was jim jacobs who was this boxing 